Hello everyone, welcome back uh, again to the online sessions for SAGE 300 2017. My name is Deepak Sharma, I'm your instructor for this uh, online uh, sessions for SAGE 300 2017. So uh, this lecture that we have today is a continuation of, uh, of the chapter of the exercise that we have completed in uh, uh, the online lecture number two. So as I had mentioned to you at the beginning of the last class uh, that uh, that this practice exercise I'm going to do with you guys uh, is a continuation of the same company. So uh, by now I'm assuming that you have the software installed on your computer and uh, you have already set up the company database file that we have created in the previous exercise. And now we are ready to activate the general ledger module. So in today's lecture, the main objective is, uh, is uh, uh, for today's class is uh, to give you an understanding of uh, the GR module, what it is and how does this work. And then we're going to get into the company file that we created last uh, in, uh, in our last lecture. And uh, we are going to set up the general ledger module for this company before we start recording transaction in, uh, in general ledger in the, using Sage 300. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, there is no need to create any new company's database because we are working on the same company that we used last week uh, in our lesson number one. So in this exercise, what we're going to do is we're going to set up the general ledger module. And once we have the general ledger module set up, what we're going to, go, going to do is we're going to look at the various options that we need to use to set up the general ledger so that we can start creating more general ledger accounts and start recording transactions. So this chapter plays an important role because everything that we're going to do today is gonna lead up uh, in, uh, in deciding how we're gonna create up the account, how the account numbers are going to be. So so the so same concept going to, going to be applied for this exercise. I'm gonna brief you guys on the topic from lesson number two, what are the important things that you need to know. As we go, as I'm going to go along with that chapter, I'm going to be illustrating some of the examples uh, that I have on this exercise and how we're going to do this. And uh, once you finish uh, listening to the to the to the lecture and, and uh, looking at the video that I posted for these uh, uh, for these topics, what I want you guys to do is uh, pr print out this exercise and do it yourself because that's the only way you can make sure that you understand this topic. So the little bit of the background of what we're going to do today is uh, you don't need to create any database load because we are going to use the same file that you uh, that we uh, that where we left last week in lesson number one. So if you have uh, heard the previous video and you are continue with the same exercise, you don't need to do anything. You're just going to start where you ended. So same company that we're using, we created a new company called Your Accounting uh, Tax and Consulting Services. And what we're going to do is we're going to activate the general ledger. These are the three things we're going to do. We're going to activate the general ledger module, set up the various general ledger options, and then we're going to create segment codes, account structure, source code, and source journal profiles. And once we finish this, I want to show you how to print these reports as well so that way in the assignments and the test, if you need to print this into a PDF format, you know how to do it. And once you finish uh, uh, listening to this video, what I want you to do is I want you to complete this exercise by yourself. Okay, I'm not going to do this with you. I will show you how to do it as I'm going to go illustrate those videos. Uh, using the Sage 300 software, but once we finish this, I want you guys to do this exercise by, you, by yourself. So now, uh, how to start with this? Uh, uh, we are gonna start where we left. So technically, we don't need to do any database upload or database download. We're simply gonna go into Sage 300. And when you open the Sage 300, it's gonna give you the options with all the companies that you have set up. So if you have Omni Electronic, which you are do using to complete your chapters, that's this one, and this was the one that we created last week, uh, I mean, in your, in your last lecture, Deep Accounting and Tax Consulting. So this one, you will have your first name, Accounting and Tax Consulting. So you click that, and you're gonna, you always need a session date. So in this case, your session date is gonna be January 1, January 1, 2020. 
and you press OK and then you get into your company file and this is where you ended last week okay so there's nothing new here whatever we did is already here you guys remember that we created a schedule so you click on the reminders there is nothing there if you click on the schedules and you look on the browser you will see the schedule that we created in the last lecture okay so everything is here so now what we need to do is we need to work on the general ledger module so if you look right here you don't see a general ledger module so now to activate the general ledger module you click on the admin services then what you're going to do is you're going to click on uh, data activation so this is where you activate the new module and then it's going to ask you do you want to create a backup um, you're going to say yes i have a backup of my database proceed with the activation because we don't need a backup because we created a backup last uh, in the last lecture now it's going to ask you which module you want to activate we're going to say we're going to activate the general agent module services so we select that Okay, so I'm trying to make sure we don't need the sub ledger actually, we need the general ledger module. I just wanted to make sure we are aligned with the test book uh, because I'm using the same software, but uh, sometimes the settings could be different. So we are clicking on the general ledger 6.4, so it is 6.4a. So we're going to select general ledger 6.4a, press next, and then it's going to ask you, so you know what? you are in 2020 you want to create this fiscal year we're going to say yes and let's say act pending we're going to click activate as soon as we click activate it's going to activate the module and you're going to click close and now what we see there is we see the general ledger module right here so this is your general ledger module everything that we need to do in chapter two is with the setup Okay, so all the setups are going to happen in a general ledger setup tab. Okay. So the first thing you need to do is you're going to click on the options and see what are the options we need to change. So when you click on the option, you see the first window. This is the contact information for this module. It's going to ask you who is the contact person. To the name because I think it's by default whatever the name that you have as a company profile will show up here so I don't have anything oh there you go so I can make the changes here so this is technically is the person responsible for the general ledger module then you click on the account it's going to ask your default closing account so in this case we don't know what the default closing account is it is a retained earning account so right now at this moment we don't have any accounts set up so we're gonna ignore this and we'll come back to this once the chart of accounts are ready. Then you click on the postings. So now there are various things that you need to know. Say allow posting to previous years. Do you want the system to allow you to uh, record transaction in the previous years? Allow provincial posting. So now if you wanted to see the posting before it goes into a GL, you can do that. So we don't wanna do any of those. We just gonna leave it as it is. But if you want to make any changes, you can do that. Uh, default source code. This is important information. So, because this kind of software is used by multinational companies and, and has so many transactions, it's easier to find the transaction if it's identified by a source code. So if you're working in a company, you are responsible for recording all the adjustment entries, and your manager calls you to say, can you show me all the adjustment entries you recorded? And there are AP and AR, so so there may be 1,000 entries in a month. Now, to find that five entries from 1,000, it's going to be very challenging. But if you name the source code, say, you know what? Let's see if we have uh, just entries. We don't have it. Let's say, you know what? We have GR general entries, and we create a source code called adjustment entries. And then we can identify that transactions by adjustment entries, so it's easy to identify. So now, because each entry has to have a source code, by default, we're going to select, you know what, over select GE as a source code. Then, how many years of permission do you want to carry? You can keep up to 99 years. So in our case, we're going to say, you know what, CRA requires me to keep six years of information. I want to keep plus one, so I want to keep seven years of information. And this is my current fiscal year. So you're right now sitting in 2019. 
So even though session data is 2020, but you're still in 2019. And then you go in the segments. Now segment plays an important role. The segments represent the account numbers. So, but the account numbers could be divided into 10 different segments. So here in this company, what I've told you is this company has, has two different departments. It has an accounting department and a tax department. And uh, so when you're doing the segments, segments, there has to be a minimum one segment of an account. So for example, the first one we're gonna use is that we will have an account number, which is the first segment. And how many digits you need? We need four digits for accounts. Then you can have additional segments which can be used for various purposes and that will represent the second part of the account number. So the first part is your account number, four digits, and then you have a second segment which represents the department. So in this case we say, you know what, we wanted to identify some of the accounts that are representing particular department. So in this, in this case we say we want to use the second segment that will represent the department. And how long you want the department number to be? I want that to be a three digit. So in this case, it will be a three digit department. And then if you want, you have more different account segments, you can do that and in the remaining segments that we have empty right here. So here we left this one right here, then you come at the bottom here, then you have the account segments. So the first thing it's asking you is account segment. See, if you have 10 different account segments, segment numbers, you have to pick one that represent the account. So it is the first one that represent the account. Okay. If you put the account right here, that doesn't mean the system will recognize by itself. You have to tell the system out of all this, which one is the account. Okay, so it's the first one that is the account number. Okay, so once you finish this, now uh, just keep in mind that this part right here, you cannot change after you set it up. So you set it up as a one, and then once we once I click save, is you cannot change this out here. So I see there, I have the option to change it, but now once I click save, there you go, you can't change it. So it's important that you pick the right account segment, okay? So for us, we know that the first one, the segment number one, is the account number. So we pick that as a one. Now, default structure code, we don't have any setup yet, so we can't, uh, we can't select anything right now. So once you finish, you click save, and you close it. Okay, you finish with the options. Okay, once the option is done, then you have to look at the various other setups that you have to go through. So let's look at one thing at a time. So once you finish the option, then we look at the source codes. Now, in this test, uh, or uh, the assignments, or the test number one that you're gonna do, I'm not gonna worry uh, worry too much about uh, about having these things done. I wanna make sure you guys understand these concepts on, on a theory part, okay? So as I mentioned to you guys, the source code represent the type of transactions. So the companies could have different source codes, but the important part is using those source codes. So the question that I will ask you is, what is the purpose of using a source code? So source code represent the type of transaction. So for the accountant or the person who is recording transactions can identify the type of transaction using a source code. If there's a 1,000 transaction that being recorded by 20 different peoples, you will not identify what transactions are for what. So, but if you ask your accountant, your accounting team, to record the transaction and ask them to use the source code to identify the type of transactions, then you will able to identify and you will to look for the transactions that represent a particular type of transaction, okay? So that's the purpose of using a source code is that you source code will be used to classify the type of transactions. So in this case, for example, I say, you know what, I wanna create two different source codes and one will be for the cash receipts. So I will create a source code called CR, and I will call them as a cash receipts. Then I click add. Then I look at the second one, I'll create another one is cash disbursement. Okay, and then here we call this as a cash disbursement. Okay, so 
click add so now i'm creating these ones so that means anytime my account then is used recording a transaction they are making a payment they will select the disbursement code as a cash disbursement okay now will create another one i'll call that as a bank charges okay so in this case we have four different three different source codes if the account is recording the transactions they will pick up this source code based on the type of transaction they're recording okay so you can have as many source codes that you want to make sure you to, uh, that the transactions are being recorded and can be classified for the feature references. Then we have a source journal profile. So this is where you group these source codes uh, that can be produced and can be grouped together for easily reporting for reporting purposes. Okay. So in this example, I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to create a one source profile. I'm going to call this bank reconciliation. Okay. And in this bank reconciliation, what I want to do is I'm going to create so the three source code that I created in the previous exercise. I want to make sure that I'll group them together under bank reconciliation. So here I'll say, you know what, I want our bank charges here. And I'll go to the next line. You press insert of your keyboard. And then you find the disbursement. This is this one right here. Again, to go to the next line, you press insert again. And then you go to the cash receipt. So I'm gonna have to find where is the cash receipt, which is right here. Okay. I want all these three things goes under one profile, and I click add. Okay. So now if I have one person who's who is gonna worry about the bank reconciliation, and I want that person to to see all the transactions that comes out from these three source codes, instead of me giving access to these source codes. If he's just going to look for a transaction that has a profile under the bank reconciliation, he will group all these transactions together for the bank reconciliation purposes. Okay. So that's your source codes. Then the next part you have is the segment codes. Okay. So now what is segment codes? Now the segment codes are used uh, to define the segments that we created in the very first exercise we did. Remember in the exercise uh, under the GL options, we created two different segments. Segment number one was uh, the accounts, and segment number two was the uh, the departments. So in this example, what we are going to do is anything that's other than the accounts, you need to define that. Okay. So in this case, we said we have the departments. Now how you have to define those departments, and then. We already know that we have two different departments. Now you want to create a code for that. I'm going to say 100 will represent accounting. Accounting. And then we're going to have, we're going to press insert, go to the next line. We have 200, 200 and 200 represent taxes. So now you have two different departments. If you have more than two, you can keep creating as many you want. There is no limit. You can have as many departments. So those are the departments. And the key thing is that anything that you have as a segment code, you need to define that. So we defined it. Now we go into the next part is the account structure. Now you say, okay, I know that the comp this company is going to use two different segments. Now when you're creating accounts, how do you want the account to look like. So we're going to say we're going to have two different types of accounts. We're going to have one called ACCT and that should represent only my account. Right. So here you have two different segments. So the one that I'm going to create as ACCT should only have four digit that will represent the account number. I'm going to click add. Then I'm going to create another one and I'm going to call this is DEPT. I'm going to call this is Department. Department Accounts. So in this one, what I want to use is that I want to have an account number, which is the first four digit. And then I also wanted to have a followed by the department number. So this is the sequence which the account should be made of. So first you will put a four digit for the account number, then you will put a three digit of the department. 
So you guys remember that in the previous exercise, we said the departments are either 100 or 200. So in this case, so for example, I have a sale account, which is 4000, and then I have the account department 400. So when I'm creating a sales account for the accounting division, that should have an account number 4000-100 for the first division, which is the account division, then you will have a second division will be 4,000-200 for the uh, for the uh, tax division. So any account that I'm going to create for the department should have consist of seven digit. The first four digit will be the account number. The last three digit will be the department number. I click add. And now you have to make sure you select one as a company's default account. So if I go back to an accounting, because you want the system to pick up one default structure and ACCT is a by default because you cannot have an account without an account number so I want to use ACCT as my company's default structure account so when I create an account by default it pick the account structure as a ACCT and then you click save and you close it okay so that's something you do with the account structure then there's an account groups you don't have to worry about the account groups this is already created for you. So if you guys remember from stage 50, you have the, you have to create the headings for the accounts, and then you have to do a total for the headings. In stage 300, you don't have to worry about it because you have these account groups already sitting in a system. So when you create an account, you identify which group that account belongs to, and will automatically put them together, okay? So these are the things that you need to know from lesson two and once you finish doing that what you're going to do is you wanted to print these reports so all the reports that you need to print from a general ledger can be found from gl reports so this gl reports includes everything that you need to print from the general ledger now what you want to do is you want to print it on a screen before you print either as a PDF or on a paper. So to do that, uh, we did this illustration in, in the Omni, com Omni Electronics as well. So you go into a file, click on print destination. It by default, it goes straight to a printer. But you want it to preview first. So you want to change it to preview. And then when you come here, you want the paper size orientation and you want A4 and you press OK. So once you have this report destination now, you will be able to see it on a screen before it prints on a computer, uh, prints it on a paper. Now, I'm just gonna show you an example to print, if you wanted to print the segment course, okay? And the process is very similar whether you do it on the segment course, source journal profile, or source course. So what do you do that is you go into a segment course, you double click on it, and it's gonna ask you, do you wanna print all the segments or specific? You're going to say all the segments and you're going to click print. Once you click print, it's going to print it on a screen. Now, if you want to print it on a paper, you click and command it to print a report. It goes to your printer that you have set up as a default. But in this case, because we are working from home, you're not going to submit any paper copies to me. You will be submitting it to me in a PDF format. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on export report right here on the left corner. You click on then it's going to say you're going to export it into a PDF. You're going to say okay, that's fine. And I say are oh, you going to print all the pages? We're going to say yes. So we're going to press okay here as well. And then it's going to ask you the to save the file. Okay. So I always say is that if you wanted to make uh, make sure your reports are saved in a right format. You create a particular folder that you want to save the report to. For example, here I create a folder on a desktop for report lesson number two. So you can do the same thing as well. If not, you just go in a in the same folder, say 300, and there you will create a particular folder for the reports. Okay. So most likely you only exporting the reports that you need to submit. So I always suggest you on a desktop create a folder with whatever name that I ask you for. And then once you have the folder created, name the report that you want to print and name it exactly what I tell you. 
Okay, so in this case, if we have say this is home practice exercise, and this is uh, exercise number two and report number one. Okay, so once you're ready, you click save, and there you go, your file is saved. And same thing that you do for the other reports as well. So if you want to print the source code, you double click on it, click print. have all the source code you do the same thing click export PDF print all the reports press OK and there you go so you do the same thing um, practice exercise number two report number two and you can name it if you want and there you go so you can export all the reports save papers don't need to print anything and once you finish the last part that you need to do is the database dump once you finish this, what you want to do is you're going to go into admin services. You're going to do a database dump. Now, before you want to do a dump, you want to make sure you have the folder ready for you. So remember what I told you guys? You have Sage 300. You have your name consulting backup. In here, this was what I created backup last time. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call the same thing by initial end of lesson two, and then in here I'm going to dump my file. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to database dump, double click on it, I'm going to select the company, the dev file, and then click browser, and I'm going to locate the file that I have, which is. C drive consulting backup now we're using is the end of lesson two and you press ok and you're going to click done again you always get this message so we're going to simply ignore it we say you know what that's fine the purpose of using this uh, separate folder is that each backup is going to be sitting in a separate folder so you're never going to have any risk of losing the files so you press ok and there we go now remember you're not finished yet you're going to do the same thing with the thesis and click dump that's okay and there you go so now you backed up the dead and thesis close it and we are done with this chapter okay so now once you finish you click file and exit so once you finish this your file is already saved and all the work that you have completed would have been saved and now when you come back to complete end of lesson uh, uh, to complete the at home at practice exercise uh, number three you will just continue with the exercise that i provide you all right so this will be the end of the lecture so what i want you to do is once you finish uh, reviewing my my uh, my uh, online lecture what i want you to do is i want you to print this from your blackboard uh, or if i will able to post that on a youtube you can download it and print it from there and I want you to practice these exercises one, two, eight, using the steps that's, that's, that we discussed in today's class. Okay, so thank you everybody for listening and good luck with uh, completing this exercise.